good afternoon and welcome back to Long Hill Baptist Church. If you would stand with me as we turn to 383. Standing as we turn to 383, we'll sing My Anchor Holds. Father God, we thank you, Lord, this afternoon for our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, our anchor, our sure foundation, our everything. Lord, thank you for your presence in our lives. Thank you for your many blessings. Thank you, Lord, for this day, which has been a great blessing. Thank you for a good time of fellowship and for the food. Father, we thank you, uh, Lord, for Stephen and Victoria for using them here today. We're very grateful. Uh, thank you for their music, uh, for the preaching of thy word. Uh, Lord, thank you for using them. Father, we love you now. We thank you. We pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. I did not uh, look at the announcements this morning. If you have your bulletin, just take that quickly, please. Just kind of review. We have a a busier week coming up, but a good week with lots of blessings and opportunities. 
course, this Friday is the um, spring lecture series um, up in uh, Stafford Springs. Uh, if you'd like to ride with me, let me know. Uh, that's a possibility. We'll probably leave here about 7.30, something like that. Uh, and then Saturday is the Northeast Leadership Conference in Southington. Are you guys going to be there? Are you going to be in Southington? You're, I, I'm putting you on the spot right now, aren't I? Yeah. You'll be in Pennsylvania. You, okay, well, okay, we're going we're gonna to excuse you. you you'll, be, you'll be traveling for ministry purposes. All right. Uh, so, so Saturday uh, is the leadership conference in Southern Ten. I just reiterate, there's, there's something for everyone, uh, truly everyone. Uh, we're looking now, there's a number of folks that have expressed interest in going, so we're probably going to take the van on Saturday morning. We'll leave from here. I'll get you the time. It'll be a fairly early departure, but uh, if you're interested, please let me know in the next day or two, and uh, we'll get you the details that you need for that. If you have questions about the conference, please see me also, but it'll be a good day. Uh, I'm going to teach one workshop that deals with teaching the Gospels and kind of relates to one of the classes I'm teaching this semester, but uh, hopefully that will be a blessing to you also, but there's, there's preaching. Uh, and then a whole series of different conferences, uh, workshops, I should say, that you can uh, pick from uh, throughout the day. Um, let's see here. Of course, next Sunday is Baptism Sunday. I have the privilege to look forward to uh, baptizing three, uh, Tom and Caroline and Mo. Uh, and so keep them in prayer, please. Uh, please do keep them in prayer. But we plan to baptize them at the close of the service, uh, the morning service next Sunday. So that's a privilege. That's a blessing. Pray for them, please. Pray, pray for them. Other things here. Have a, a business meeting coming up uh, later this month. You have the date here in the calendar. Um, I think we should sing. Should we sing? You think? All right, let's stand together. We'll turn to number 565. All right, please do stand with me if you can. We'll turn to 565. We'll sing all four verses of Send the Light. 565. There's a call come ringing o'er the westless waves. Send the light, send the light. There are souls to rescue, there are souls to save. Send the light, send the light. Send the light, the blessed gospel light, let it shine from shore to shore. Send the light, the blessed gospel light, let it shine forevermore. We have heard the Macedonian call today. Send the light, send the light, and the golden offering at the cross we lay. Send the light. Send the light, send the light, the blessed gospel light, let it shine from shore to shore. Send the light, the blessed gospel light, let it shine forevermore. Let us pray that grace may everywhere abound. Send the light, send the light, and a Christ-like spirit everywhere be found. Send the light. Light. Send the light, the blessed gospel light, let it shine from shore to shore. Send the light, the blessed gospel light, let it shine forevermore. And the last, let us not grow weary in the work of love. Send the light, send the light, let us gather jewels for a crown above. Send the light. Send the light, send the light, the blessed gospel light, let it shine from shore to shore. Send the light, the blessed gospel light, let it shine forevermore. Amen. You may be seated. Well, all right, good afternoon. What a wonderful lunch. That was had. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. It's one, two things I love. Three things, excuse me, three things I love. Number one is my Lord in Christ. Um, number two is my wife. 
Uh, number three is uh, food, and I absolutely love uh, food. We had a, when I was in college, we had a, the, the class hour that I absolutely despised was my 2 o'clock hour. And this was why, because we had lunch at 12.20, and then we had an hour of rest, and then we had class afterwards. At that point, I'm just getting over my food coma, and I'm just waking up from my nap. And so 2 o'clock classes for me was tough to stay awake at, but nevertheless, uh, the, but yes. But thank you again for the, for the wonderful meal. I had enjoyed it very, very much. Um, just a couple things. Uh, if you do stop, stop by our table, I encourage you to pick one of our prayer cards up. Remind you just pray for us. Um, we, we, we need prayer. Uh, prayer is necessary. Uh, I did want to tell you that they are seven cents a copy, so um, I, I discounted it today for five cents a copy. So you can drop that. I'm kidding. No, I'm kidding. You also see this pamphlet up there. It's completely free. You can take at your uh, take if you need to. It's how to f effectively pray for your missionaries. I believe it's important. I think Pastor mentioned this earlier. Specific prayer requests, specific specific prayers result in specific answers. And so uh, just just know how to pray. Because missionaries need prayer. And I, I don't think uh, I don't I don't think it's just uh, it's not fair to say oh just pray for missionary so and so and you're done. I don't think that's what you would want if someone was praying for you. Um, it's just, uh, just tips on how, just what to look for as far as uh, prayer requests for missionaries. I read it myself, a very, very simple read. I, I enjoyed it a lot. I like simple. I'm a simple man. So I think simple, I'm all for that. But if you, if you, have, if you haven't gotten one already, those pamphlets are very, very good, uh, and I enjoy them a lot. All right. I had something for today, and because uh, Zach... Hammond, Brother Zach Hammond wasn't there this morning. I guess I have to preach the same message today. Is that okay? I'm kidding. No, I'm not. I'm just kidding. Ephesians, please. Ephesians chapter 1. Again, I just want to thank you for the opportunity of being here. I got to talk with some of you guys and just know your backgrounds. I met, I met some with my own name, which is always fantastic, and spelled it the right way um, with the PH, Stephen. Um, if you spell it with a V, God can forgive you too. Um, but uh, I've been able to talk with some of you guys. Uh, I believe the church should be a place where we encourage one another. Um, we come from different backgrounds, different situations, and I think, I think uh, the church should be a safe haven um, for the Christian, and, uh, and, 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 uh, and, and, and it's up to you to make it, make it so. And I've been thoroughly enjoyed talking to some of you guys. It's awesome. Uh, again, if you're in Ephesians, um, give me a second. I'm not there yet. Ephesians chapter 1. We'll start reading in verse number 19. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power to usward who believe according to the working of his mighty power, for which he brought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places? Verse number 21, far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. That word power comes from the Greek word didymus, which means, which where we get our, where our, where we get our word dynamite from. And we, can, we know how much power a stick of dynamite can actually do. Uh, that is the power of God. He is powerful. This, mor this afternoon, I can't say morning anymore, excuse me. This afternoon, we're going to be talking about boom goes the dynamite. As powerful as dynamite can be, God is even more so powerful. Power is the ability to act or produce an effect. If I want to push this water bottle off, I need the power to do so. I can, but I won't do it because I, want to, I don't want to make a mess. But the power is the possession of control or authority or influence over others. Um, certain governors have the power to overturn laws to, to, and so on and so forth. It could also be in terms of physical might. Some people have, are stronger than others. My brother, my little brother, he's four years younger than me. He always was smaller than me. Um, now he is an inch taller than I am and about twice my size. Um, so I, don't, I, don't, I can't pick on him too much. But growing up, we always did arm wrestling. Um, that's something guys do. I don't know if girls do. I've never seen girls arm wrestle. But I know us brothers, we arm wrestled a lot. Um, and me and my little brother, we spent the most time together. We arm wrestle, and, and, uh, and I beat him every time, easily. 
And it wasn't until about three, four years ago, um, this is after he went to high school and was involved with their basketball and flag football team, which, mean he, which means he conditioned a lot. So he came, I was, I was studying at New England at the time, and he came to visit me and he says, all right, let's have an arm wrestle. I'm like, no biggie. I got this, not a problem. So we get there, and we, we start. And we go. I have it recorded, actually. We recorded it. And so we did it for a minute straight. Then we didn't budge. I tried my hardest. He wouldn't move. He tried his hardest, and it wouldn't move. We were about the equal power. Um, I eventually, I, I did actually win, but I'm, I'll be honest, it was that, that much I won. Uh, I won't arm wrestle him now because I'm afraid he'll beat me, and I, don't, and I want to hold my, my victory. But the power it can also refer to physical might. There are some people stronger than others. Power is also can be used as a capacity to influence or ex even exert energy to accomplish something. In order to turn on the TV, it must have power. And so, and so we see this power of Christ. Number one, he always, first of all, he's power because he has the authority to overturn things. He's power, I'm pretty sure he's strong enough to hold your situation and situation the entire. He's powerful. Let's pray and we'll go ahead and get started. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this wonderful day you've given us, Lord. Thank you for the wonderful meal. Help us as we dive in today as we study your power, Lord, and you are a powerful God. And, and, and you, you keep this universe together, and it's nothing for you. And help us to, to trust in you and to, to confide in you our situations, our, our fears, because you have the power to hold them, to hold us. All of these ask in your name. Amen. How powerful is God? I'm going to start by saying this. It's, it's very interesting. If you think of it this way, we can see how powerful he is, all right? We take the word, we say God created the universe. Did he or did he not? Yes? Yes. We, we get that word universe, and I, this is what I love about this. You split it in half. You get the words uni and verse. Uni means one or single. Verse means a spoken sentence. So if you got universe together, what do we have? A single spoken sentence. How did God create the world? Let there be light. And there was light. And it was good. God only had to speak a single sentence and the universe began. How, how awesome is that? And, 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 and it's funny, you can think about how atheists talk about, oh, the universe, literally in the same universe, they're acknowledging that there is a God that created the world in a single spoken sentence, but it is what it is. But God is powerful, and a powerful God made a couple powerful creations as well. Elephants can carry up to seven tons, which is equal about 130 adult humans. The Atlantic Goliath grouper can grow up to nine feet long and can weigh up to 800 pounds, and they are known to eat adult sharks, octopuses, and even human divers. The dung beetle can lift up about 1,100 times its own weight, which is about the same as a human carrying six full double-decker buses. The saltwater crocodile, bite, the, the, its bite can generate up to 3,700 pounds of force. The anaconda can squeeze up to the strength of 10 people. The blue whales can generate up to 600 horsepower, and a zebra can kick with nearly 3,000 pounds of force. These are definitely very powerful creatures, but we serve a God who is much more powerful. Number one, turn with me to uh, um, and Corinthians, sorry, Colossians. Colossians chapter 1, I believe. Colossians chapter 1, uh, verse number 16. So we see here first, number one, we see a God who is powerful. He has power over creation. Power over creation. Uh, Colossians chapter 1, verse number 16, it says, For by him were all things created, and, in, and that are in heaven, that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him, and for him, and he is before all things, and by him all things consist. Here it is, those two verses in a nutshell. God created everything. 
He created everything. Every time we look, we look and say, oh, God, God can't do this. Why would he even think that? And, and, and sometimes I catch myself thinking, man, I'm, I'm facing a situation. Man, I'm facing a job ahead of me. There, God, I don't, I don't think he can handle this. Let, God, let, let me handle this. Well, let me ask you something. When was the last time you created something? When was the last time I created something? Well, you know, we can, we can, I, I, can, I can invent this. Well, who gave you the hands to do it? Who gave you the energy to do it? Who gave you the materials to make it? God created something out of nothing. Wow. I mean, I, I, know, I know that's, that's kind of elementary, if you will, but that, that in itself, it's, it's, it's amazing. It's one, I mean, and when, once we grasp how powerful God really is, we can, we can trust him with anything we have. People say, I, how can I trust someone that, that I, don't, I don't know what he's capable of? We read the Bible, we know exactly what he's capable of. And that's the least he's capable of. So number one, he has power over creation. What's that? The animals. He has power over the animals. Uh, and I'm, I'm starting this out. It's pretty simple. I'll build up from here. Number one, we see that he has the ability to... Make animals do things that are not common. Number one, we'll see in Numbers 22, he makes a donkey talk. I've never seen a human, uh, 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 an animal talk. The closest thing I've, I've heard to an animal talk was a parrot. Uh, we were at a family fun night at, at a church, and they were, that's where they had like games, and they have a devotional, and they had like board games. And one of the men, he brought his cockatoo. I think it was a cockatoo. Uh, it was some kind of bird, um, and he and it was screaming the whole time. It was it was actually saying words. It, it 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 amazes me how some animals has the ability to mimic sounds and mimic words. But uh, I've never heard a donkey talk, not that I can understand. What happened? Balaam was coming up, and donkey stops, and Balaam says, "Come on, we gotta go." The donkey sees an angel that Balaam doesn't see. And the donkey doesn't want to go. And, and finally the donkey says, why are you hitting me? A talking donkey. Number two, a second, a second example we see is Noah's Ark. In Genesis chapter 7, we see God brought the animals two by two to Noah's I don't know the last time you tried to uh, uh, corral some animals. If you go to a pig pen and try to corral pig, pigs, good luck. Especially the little piglets. If you go to a, a, a dog, a, um, a, like a kennel house, we have lots of dogs. It's hard to keep them all in line. Uh, we were recently at a wedding yesterday, and the ring bearer was a dog. It was, the, it was the couple's dog, and they had the rings on the back, and they had to have it on a leash because it was going this way and that way and wanted to go all over the place. No, God had animals two by two, Going right. No, he didn't have to go out and look for, for animals. God brought them right to him. Not only just two, two of each one. You ever heard of pack animals? They travel in packs. How hard would that be to travel in two for them? How, how crazy, how crazy powerful God can be. Not only, now we see the, the talking donkey in Noah's Ark, but we also see the, the example in 2 Kings, uh, sorry, 1 Kings chapter 17, when the ravens were feeding Elijah. Remember, Elijah was, was running from Jezebel, and Jezebel, Jezebel was, was persecuting him. He stopped by the, by the creek that had his water, and God had ravens give him food. Last time I checked, ravens are very selfish creatures. Uh, if you ever watched a raven when he's with his prey, he will, he, will, he will sit by his prey and get its wings to cover it so that no one else, no other ravens can take it. Very, very selfish. That selfish raven God used to feed Elijah. What power that God has over his creation. Not only his animals, but also the weather. Turn with me to Nahum chapter 1. Right after Micah, right before Habakkuk. Nahum chapter 1. Nahum chapter 1 verse 3 says, This Lord is slow to anger and great in power and will not acquit the wicked. The Lord hath this way in the whirlwind and in the storm, and the clouds are the dust of his feet. The clouds that we see way, way above us, huge thunder clouds. The Bible says to God, it's like the dust of his feet. He has the power of animals. He has the power over the weather. How do we see in Mark 4, he calmed the wind and the waves. 
In, 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 in 1 Kings with Elijah, again, we see that it stopped raining for, for three and a half years. Not only did he keep it from raining, but he made it raining again. We see in, 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 in the battle that jo- in, in one of the jo- in the battles that Joshua fought, he made the sun stand still. You wonder why we have a leap year? It's I, I don't have proof, but it said the reason why we have a leap year because the sun stood still for twenty four hours. So every four years we have to make up that day. Ask, ask right. I'm not sure if it's how true that that is or not, but the sun stood still for one day. And then, of course, the flood in Genesis with Noah. It rained for 40 days and 40 nights. It rained covered the tip of, tip of the mountains. What a powerful God we have. And this is just his creation. This is something we see as, wow, man, the zebra can kick the 3,000 pounds. Wow, just the wind and tornadoes. Who, uh, who, who felt the earthquake this last week? I didn't feel any. When I heard about it, I was shook. I didn't feel it. And in New Jersey, I think it was a little more prominent because it's starting to start in New Jersey. Earthquakes can be very powerful. Earthquakes have moved continents. Earthquakes have, ch- in Chile, they have to change their topography because the earthquakes are so violent, it changes the land structure. That's how powerful that is. In, in, uh, in, and you don't have a lot of hurricanes up here, but in Jackson, in Florida, we have a lot of hurricanes. Uh, we have a hurricane season. Um, uh, Victoria had the, uh, the privilege of experiencing our hurricane season. We actually worked the day of the hurricane came in. We were the only two people outside um, working. But uh, uh, down near St. Augustine area, there's, a, there's an island called Amelia Island. And uh, I went to school there for uh, two years. And when the hur- I think it was Hurricane Matthew hit, that whole island went underwater. Powerful stuff. And God is more powerful. He created that. How powerful he is. Not only is he power, has, he has, does he have power over creation, but he also has power over circumstances. We're kind of, we're kind of leaning away toward, toward, the, uh, toward the physical aspect part. Power over Circumstance. Turn with me to Deuteronomy chapter 28. Deuteronomy chapter 28. Again, we see stories in the Bible. The Bible says that there are end samples. There are examples to see how God, how God dealt with his people back then. You see examples of good men and bad men. And, and, and even so, we see the power of God, the love of God, the mercy and the judgment. of. We see all of what God is and come past in all the scriptures. And and, and Jonah chapter 27, excuse me, chapter 28, verse number 7. The Lord shall cause thine enemies that rise up against thee to be smitten before thy face. They shall come out against thee one way and flee before thee seven ways. There's lots of times in the the, the time of the children of Israel, they they were under very dire circumstances and God changed it. He has the power over to change circumstances over dangerous situations. Over dangerous situations. Remember the story of Elisha? He, he came out one day and, and, and they stood on top of the house and they saw the Assyrian army surrounded the city. They were waiting to strike. And the servant said, Elisha, we're in hot water. There's no way. There's there's a whole lot of them and a whole little of us. And Elisha prayed and saying, praying as Lord, have my servant see what I see. And when God opened his servant's eyes, past the Assyrian army, he saw the hosts of God, the army of God. And they smote the Assyrians without the people of Israel having to lift up a sword. Elijah and the prophets of Baal. Remember that? Elijah was up on a mountain. They challenged Elijah, which, which God is more powerful? Your God or Baal? And what happened? We had thousands of prophets. They came. They, 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 made, this, they made this altar. They, they sacrificed. And Elijah says, I don't think he can hear you. So they screamed louder and started jumping up and down saying, hear us, Baal, hear us, hear us. 
and I think he's asleep. I think he's on vacation. Aren't you glad God never takes a vacation? Aren't you glad God never sleeps? Aren't you glad that God is always there? And they say, Bill, they start cutting themselves and hear us, hear us, and nothing happened. Elijah simply took 12 stones, made an altar. Not only do that, he, he, he dug a moat around the altar. Not only did he do that, but he asked, hey, give me barrels of water. Not, not, not ba- barrels of water. Pour it over the, pour it over the, uh, the altar. Pour it around in the moat. It was, the moat was full. altar was wet. And Elisha prayed. And God sent fire from heaven. Now, it, I'm not much of a chemist. But I know that if you put water on fire, it tends to go out. I think so. And you can't make fire out of wet wood. I know that. But the power of God to send down fire from heaven, not only to consume the water on the altar, but the water around the altar and the stones and everything in between. It was completely decimated. Wow. And then also we see the the three Hebrew children. That was a dangerous situation, wasn't it? There was a fire. Again, fire. They said, if you don't bow down, you'll be thrown to this fire. I I was ironing one day when I was younger. I I was learning how to iron. I was ironing my shirt, and and I had I had this system. I iron it, and I put the iron facing a certain way that when I straighten it out, I don't even have to look. I can just grab it and keep doing it. I, I had the whole system now. Well, I put it down, put it the way I wanted it. My mom came over and and gave me some tips and used the iron and put it facing a different direction, and I wasn't paying attention. So I'm doing that. Turn, and I go to grab the iron instead of grabbing the handle. I grabbed the, uh, the opposite end. That hurt a lot. Fire, to me, it scares me. I'm going to be a little honest with you. Uh, I, I try and stay away from the kitchen because fire does scare me. Uh, when, I was, when I was growing up, we had a gas stove. We didn't have electric. We had gas. In order to ignite it, we had to ha- hold a, a lighter to it and then... Pff, uh, that was scary to me as a kid. I thought my eyebrows would be singed. I, I, as a as a six year old kid, I was scared. Fire scares me. And when and when Nebuchadnezzar says heat it seven times hotter to the point that when the Hebrew children were thrown in, notice how in with Elisha and Elijah, God changed the circumstance right there. With Hebrew children, He didn't. He let everything go. So you know what? They're going to be thrown in the fire but he still saved them. Nebuchadnezzar comes around and says, were there not, were there, did we not throw three men in there? How come I see four and the fourth one looking like the son of God? They came out, they didn't smell burn, not, not a hair was singed. That's the power of God. He has the power over dangerous situations, not only dangerous situations, but difficult situations. We had the, the situation with the widow with no oil. What happened? She started pouring oil, and she got oil. The widow with no food, remember Elijah went and says, prepare, prepare a morsel for me first, and then for you and your child, and throughout the drought, and they, they, had, they had food. And then we see in, in, in the Gospels where Jesus goes around healing the blind, the deaf, and the lame. Those, those, those were difficult situations for them. Do you have a dingy situation you're dealing with? Do you have a difficult situation you're in the middle of it, it's life is life is full of difficult situations that, that 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 is that is a truth life is hard it's it is it's what it's life it's stained by sin this world is stained by sin and we may come in a plane and maybe you're in it right now but we will eventually come to a point where we're facing a dangerous situation we're facing a difficult situation. Man, this relationship with my family, it's, it's hard to deal with. I don't know what to do. I don't know, where, I don't know how, to, how, to, how to speak to my family member. 
I don't know how to speak to my friends or, or even at my job. It can be difficult, but God has the power. Over. Sometimes we like to say, okay, God, you, you, you stay back there. I'll take care of my situation. I'll take care of it. I don't need you. Oh, how much we need God. Oh, how much we need him. Not only is, does he have the power of, over creation, and the power over circumstance, but he has power over conditions. Turn with me to 2 uh, Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse number 9. Second Corinthians chapter 12 and verse number 9. If you're in that difficult situation, if you're in a dangerous situation, I, 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 I encourage you to memorize this verse and put it in your heart. And he said unto me, my grace... Is sufficient. Amen. I could stop right there, but that's not where I'm focusing on. My grace is sufficient for thee, for my, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. The times where you feel the most weak, that's when God will make himself real in your life. Most gladly, therefore, I will glory in my infirmities and the power of Christ that may rest upon me. Paul here was saying, man, I'm having a hard time. And no one, I don't think any of us can deny that Paul had a hard time. Lots of things he went through. He had physical ailments as well. I'm not sure exactly what it was, but he asked God to take away his physical ailments three times, and three times the Lord said no. So I said, you know what? In my infirmities, I will praise you. He has the power over conditions. Not, well, f- well, what kind of conditions? First of all, over physical conditions. Remember that one woman with the issue of blood came over to Jesus? He doesn't have to speak to her. Just touch, he, she just touched his mantle. That's all she did. Just touched him. Right. Didn't speak, she didn't speak to her. He didn't speak to her. They didn't even make eye contact. He, he, she touched him, and Jesus said, I felt the power come from him, and she was healed. He didn't have to say anything. There was a woman with issue, but there's a feeding of the 5,000. Man. Man, if, he had, if we had Jesus in this room, we have to worry about make numbers and making food for a lot of people. He can just get, you know, two chickens, pick it apart, and here we go. We've got chicken for everyone, right? He fed 5,000 people, and there were leftovers. Lots of leftovers. Remember when uh, in the garden when, when their kin arrest Jesus, and Peter came and the sword and whoosh, took off his... The, the high priest servant's ear, and Jesus touched it, and it was back. He, he didn't grab the ear and say, hey, let me stitch it up for you. No. He just touched it, and boom, he just got an ear there. A doctor can stitch up an ear. Not a problem. But Jesus, only Jesus can make one come back. He had the power over death. And that's what we, we celebrated last Sunday. Resurrection, right? He died. Power over death. Not only did he resurrect himself, but remember Lazarus? He was dead for what, three days? Lazarus, come forth. And he walked out. He, God has power over physical conditions. Sometimes we pray, Lord, we, we all know someone who's sick. And it could be his will that he heals them. There's been a, a number of miraculous healings that that's done in the hospital that doctors can't explain. I, I'll say one in, in my, my own personal uh, uh, life. I was, I was in a college in North Dakota. I, was, I first went to college, and I passed out. I'm not sure why. And when I woke up, I couldn't move my legs. I, I, I could feel them. They weren't numb. It's almost like my muscles didn't, like I was, I couldn't move them. Uh, I, I, I could, like I said, I could feel them. I could feel coldness. I, I, where they pinched it, I, I could feel it. So they brought me to the hospital, and I stayed overnight. And then about, about mid-afternoon of the next day, 
I started moving them again. Doctor told me, I don't know why their legs stopped working. Now I know why they started working. I, I, said, I said, I don't know why either, but I have a pretty good idea. He said, well, why, why did that happen? Well, while I was there, I, I had the opportunity to, to share the gospel with two of the nurses there. And one of them said that she already, she already believed Christ and was appreciative of the track that I gave her. And the other one, I think she was, I think she was being nice to me because maybe she, she thought I was on meds or something like that. But I tried to give her the gospel. She was kind of like smiling. But I can't explain it. Doctor told me, I, I can't explain it. Unless it happens to you again, I won't know what. I said, Lord, don't hold that happen again. That was, that was a physical conditions. Not only over power over physical condition, but power over spiritual condition. This is where I'm going to top it off. Turn with me in 1 John 4. 4. This, is where this, this, is where we, this is where we'll finish at. 1 John 4. 4. First John 4, 4 says, Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Newsflash. Without the power of God, we can't do anything. We can't overcome anything. We can't overcome our own emotions. We can't overcome a situation. We can't overcome our anxiety. We can't overcome... The devil. We can't on our own strength. And that's why when we accept Jesus Christ as our Savior, the Holy Spirit comes and dwells. We, only, we know that the, the triune God, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, they're three in one. They're the same. The same power that God has is the same power that God the Father has, the same power that God the Holy Spirit has. has. That's the Holy Spirit that's inside of you. He has the power over the spiritual condition. How so? Salvation, first and foremost. Only God has the power to save a soul. And it's been said many times, the preacher, the pastor can be up here and preach every Sunday. Preacher can't get you to heaven. The evangelist can come here uh, a week of revival. Evangelist can't get you to heaven. We can sit in a pew all day long. That won't get us to heaven. I, 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 was, I was talking to a bunch of kids and Kind of, kind of making them understand. I was using the uh, example. Okay, if if you sit in a garage all day long and you start drinking gasoline and you start making car noises and put put tires on your on your limbs, does that make you a car? No. Just like you coming to church and doing good things that doesn't make you a Christian. I asked one. I, I I said something to. I said I said the same thing to to the kids and I said what I said if if you if you sat in a garage and and and, and gasoline. Would that make you a car? And one boy said, no, that would make me dead. I said, but you're right. No, only God has the power to save a soul. Now, God can choose you and me to be the vessel to say, hey, I have some good news for you. He has the power to save their soul. Not only does he have power for salvation, but he has power over the carnal world. And I'm, not, I'm talking about our own fleshly desires. Unfortunately, when we're saved, you, know, you, you and I both know this, when we're saved, we still have fleshly desires, fleshly lusts, whatever it may be. You may be doing good one day, saying, okay, I'm serving God, I'm doing great, I'm obeying him. And the next day, you're like, how did I mess up this bad? I did it again. Oh, really? No, God has the power to help you conquer that. And he has a power over temptation as well. Temptation is going to be there. It's going to be there. Whether you're here in America, whether I'm over in Spain, it doesn't change. Temptation is going to be there. Man, I'm in a situation, I know it's wrong, and I'm wanting to do wrong, but I don't want to do it, and I don't know how to get out of it. Doesn't, isn't there a verse that says that God will make a way to escape? Right? With every temptation he brings, there's an escape. We have 
the peace and knowing that God is powerful enough that no matter what Satan throws at you, no matter what the devil says, you know what? You can mess up this bad. Remember when you did this? He can throw everything at you, but you can look at him and say, first of all, that's been forgiven by God. Number two, I don't have to do that. I don't have to fulfill my fleshly lust. I can have victory over that through the power of God. And it's through this power that we go, we, we read in Acts, Acts 1 8, when they go out, but Jesus says that I'm giving you power to go and evangelize. When we realize how powerful God is, we can see how powerful He is in our own lives and use that to say, hey, there's a powerful God out there who wants to save you. Who loved you enough to send his only begotten son to die for you. And we can use that say, hey, let him work in my life to reach others for Christ. Because if we want to reach a world for Christ, we cannot do it in our own power. We can't. I, I can't sit up here, stand up here and preach and, 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 and say whatever I need to say in my own power. Because if I do, it's going to do nothing to you. It's going to do nothing to me. The only thing that works is the power of God. And we need that. We need that. There are many things that are powerful that affect the life of a Christian. It is always a great reminder that no matter how powerful we find our adversities, God is greater still. Powerful as the animals that I mentioned, God is even more powerful. Powerful as Satan himself may be, God is more powerful. Powerful. He is greater and more powerful than our desires and wants and temptations. This powerful God, yet the only ones who can limit his power in our own lives is ourselves. God won't force his power on you. He won't. He loves you too much for that. He also loves you enough to say, hey, you need my help. But leave that to you and me. When he, he, he would go out grocery shopping with his kids, his son with them, two or three, and his son would want to help and say, hey, can I, can I carry, can I carry the, the milk? And, and go ahead and grab that milk and trying to drag it along, trying to pick it up and couldn't quite get to it. And, and he could say, well, can his father help? Yeah. He was waiting for him to ask. And he's dragging that, he's trying to pick it up and kind of a little further, he sits down. Dad, can you help me? Comes over and doesn't pick up the jug. Picks it up with him and takes it, carries it. In our own power, we're going to just struggle through life. We're going to drag through life. Man, i got to get through this. got to get this done. got to get this done. i got to go over here. I'm gonna... He's, why aren't you there? He's waiting for you. He's waiting for you to ask. I want to say, hey, God, please help me. Absolutely. He comes up, holds your hand, and carries you with him. No matter what situation you're facing, no matter what personal issue you're facing, God has the power to carry you through it. When it comes to reaching this world for Christ, we can't do it on our own. You can't witness your neighbor on your own. You can't witness your family on your own. I can't witness the Spanish people on my own. We need the power of God. He is so powerful, but unfortunately, we ourselves oftentimes are the one who limit his power. I say, well, then he's not all powerful. No, he just loves you. That's what it is. I'm not going to force it. I want, I want God to use me. I want to do great things for God. I, I want to reach my family for the Lord. You can. In the power of God. Remember, God is powerful over his creation, powerful over circumstances, powerful over conditions. You can't get your family members saved. I can't get my family members saved. We can just share the gospel. That's what we can do. But it's up to the Holy Spirit to work in their hearts and minds. But how will they know if they're not told about it in the first place?
question and the pastor comes and is, is, you say, maybe, maybe this power is not real in my life. Maybe we, maybe we should do, do some searching. Are we, are we halting his power in our life? Or is there sin in our life that's preventing God from working our hearts? Let's pray. Father God, thank you for the message that we've heard. Father, thank you for your power. Thank you for a powerful Savior. Lord, thank you for the reminder this afternoon of the importance of relying upon your power, your strength, in the ministry that you give to each of us. Lord, we understand this afternoon we're convicted of the temptation and tendency to serve in our own power, to go through the motions of ministry in our own strength without asking for your power. Lord, this afternoon I ask you for power in our ministries from you. Lord, we confess this afternoon we need your power in the ministries of this church. I pray, Father, that you remind us each day, each week, to pray and ask like the little boy in the milk. Lord, we need your power, your strength in our ministries, those that you've called us to, to be effective for you. Or perhaps this afternoon some would take a moment and pray, Lord, we confess, I confess, I tend to rely upon my own strength, my own power, without asking you to work your power. Lord, I agree, I confess. Help me to turn from that and to turn toward you each day and each week. I'll give you a moment to pray. I'd like to ask several of our men to pray for Stephen and Victoria. Please pray that they will continue to go forth in God's power and that the Lord will bless them, meet their needs. Raising support is no small task, but God can provide. Many difficulties in the process, but God can provide. He alone has the power. Ask Zach to pray, please. Ask Brother Garcia to pray, please. Brother R, ask you to close, please. Let's pray for the lions, please. Zachary. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity to spend time with um, my friend, my friend uh, Stephen and Victoria. And we thank you for giving them both the, the willingness in their heart and their opportunity to answer your call. Lord, I pray, um, as we say, that they would practice what they preach today. I pray that they would seek you for um, that power, Lord. I pray that they would just seek to daily be submitted to your spirit and that daily that they would just be filled with your spirit and walk circumspectly, uh, not included in the revival. I just pray you'd give them the wisdom they need, that you'd give them the finances that they need, Encourage